What is going on, familia? What's going on, brothers and sisters? What's going on, family of God? Welcome to the Morning Devo with your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. God bless you. I hope you are enjoying your day so far, and um, I'm just uh, excited for today. It doesn't look like I'm excited, right, because I'm just um, coming out of my my sleeping pattern because I'm a night owl. I stay up to 2, 3, 4 in the morning sometimes. Uh, I don't suggest that to anybody. It's just um, the way I'm, I'm wired. So um, if you're a night owl, you know what I'm talking about. Morning or the daytime is not really our thing. Well, we get it going. So I figured let's get it going with the Word of God. That will help fuel us up, right? Give us some energy and give us some good stuff that we need to get the day going, right? So let's do this. Let's um, talk about loyalty and kindness. Loyalty and kindness. We're, what is it good for? Where does it come from, right? Can we actually live in loyalty can we do this thing can we be kind to others do we need the uh, the approval of people before we need god's approval how, how are we going to handle all of this right so uh, we need help i know i need help in this in this uh part of life amen because not everybody is loyal not everybody's kind but god is loyal and god is kind so i'm figuring if we have the goods if we have god in us the hope of glory then I'm believing that we could live in kindness and loyalty, in loyalty and kindness. We could do this, but apart from his spirit, I don't know if we could pull this off. So the people who are kind, normally, naturally, amen, praise the Lord. Um, God designed them that way. And then when it comes to loyalty, when people are loyal to other people. I know um, some people that I've heard say, listen, I'm loyal. And, you know, praise the Lord. But if something, if there's a hiccup in a relationship or the hiccup in a situation, then I don't know how loyal you could be if you don't have the power of God helping you to be kind and loyal. So kindness and loyalty. Today on the morning Devo, I got to get my phone to start sharing this out. But um, uh, I don't know where I put it. But I'll go get it when we have the minute to share. So let me just greet some people here in the morning Devo. Um, Sister Joyce, good morning. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord always. Uh, Pastor Michael Jakes, praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the morning, Devo, my friend and my brother. And my beautiful wife, Uni Lopez, is telling everybody good morning to everybody, to everyone here. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, um, you could always leave them on the live chat. Also, if you're on the podcast, from whatever platform you're listening to the podcast, there's always a way to comment or connect somehow, some way. I don't know, there's so many different platforms I'm on, so I couldn't tell you exactly how to do it because I don't know exactly what platform you're using. It could be it could be Podcast Catcher, it could be um, Apple Podcasts, it could be Google Podcasts, from what, Spotify, it could be from wherever, but there's a way you could connect with me. If not, you go soulwinnerswithaz.org and press the contact us, and I'll get back to you as soon as I get the message. All right. So if you know somebody also that you want to share this with or you say, wait a minute, they're not on social. So there's no way they're going to be able to um, connect with us. Um, that's not true. You can send them right to the website. So when is with a Z dot org and right there, they have a podcast player right there. They have the video and under the video, they have a Bible interactive online Bible all for free. So I'm trying to take away the excuses. Last year, if you were following me, um, my mission was to stop any excuse that I would have not to believe in the word of God. Amen. And not to believe in God's word in my life and for other people's lives. And I think that it helped me. That whole year helped me. The pandemic, right? To run out of excuses of not to believe. So I'm trying to help others run out of excuses of not getting this word, right? Not getting this word in their lives, in their hearts, in their minds, speaking it out, living it out. No matter what age you are. You could be young or you could be old or everybody in between. Amen. So let's live this out loud. Amen. If you have any prayer requests, I'm going to give 30 seconds because I know there's a little lag between the time I'm saying this and the time you receive the message or to see, receive, or hear my voice or you see what I just said. So um, I'll give you 30 seconds. If you have a prayer request, please don't hesitate to put it right here on the live. Also, if you want to share something that is totally private, you don't want the public to know you have a concern, prayer request, an idea, comment. I'm concerned, whatever the case, and you don't want everybody to see it, you could always use the inbox on the social media, or you could email me at DJ Samrock at soulwinners with a Z.org for all my podcast listeners. Amen. Uh, I had an opportunity 
to um, dialogue with a young man via uh, Facebook chat, and we had a good conversation, man. And um, that's what I'm talking about. And it was late. We didn't get off until like 2.15 in the morning. Um, the young man, 25-year-old young man, um, finding his way, you know what I'm saying? And he said, let me ask the old guy, right? And I hope and I pray that I was uh, of value to him. And so that's what I'm talking about. Those kind of conversations, you will never know what we're talking about. It was all in the private because I respect his privacy. But we did it, and I'm, I'm just glad and happy that I was able to show some kindness um, to the young brother, okay? So I don't see any prayer requests here, so let me do this. Let me pray, and then uh, find a minute. I got to find my phone. I think I see it. And then we're going to share this out with as many people as we can, we can, or as many people who come to mind. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your miraculous works in my life and in every single person's life that called upon your name to be saved. I pray ahead your protection. I pray against distraction over every single viewer, every single listener. In the name of Jesus, I pray for awkward angels, ministering angels to every situation, every home, every workplace right now by the power of God. I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would speak and that you would teach us your ways, your truth, your life, and that it would be given to all those who are willing to understand and willing to listen. Although we might not be looking for you, Lord Jesus, every single day of our lives, but I know one thing for sure, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for it, that you're looking for us. When we are found by you, we have life, we have freedom, we have liberty, we have financial breakthrough, we have health, we have strength, we have boldness, we have courage. We have everything we need to live this life out when you are living it through us. So, Father God, I hope and pray that loyalty and kindness will be worn like a necklace for every single person that's listening, connecting, and watching. And I pray, Lord God, for every single thing, every single promise that you remind us of your promises for every single life that's connecting and that's going to connect later on. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. I see you, Brother Damien. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Let's take a minute to share this out. And when we come back, we'll be in Proverbs Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. And I'm going to go run and get my phone. Hopefully, I won't trip over no wires or anything. Then you see me limping back. So let me um, give a minute. Share this on your phone. Share this on your tablet, on your desktop with as many people as you can. And when we come back, we'll get back into it. Um, So wait, let me just leave you with a question. So that way, before we get to scripture, you could start thinking of this question and then we're going to marry that question with the scripture. Why is it important to find favor with people? Why is it so important to find favor with people? Other people that, you know, human beings. All right. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back, podcasters. I apologize for that awkward minute again. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I need to. I'm, I'm telling you, it's so weird that I know that I need to do it and I don't do it. It's just literally pressing a button. Forgive me, podcasters, for that awkward minute. If you want, send me a message and say, listen, man, I don't, I'm don't. i tired of your awkward minutes. Why don't you edit those podcasts and I'll take responsibility and I'll edit the podcast and take that minute of silence out if that's something that's really distracting. Or you could take that minute on a positive note, you could take that minute and you could actually share the podcast player with other people you know, or you could take that minute to really um, dive into the word before we get into it. But today we're in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 4. Loyalty and kindness as a necklace. And the scripture says it like this. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Very important. So never forget what we learn from God. 
Never forget what we learn from our parents. Never forget the good things that we learn from other people. Never, never forget the things I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years. See, you do that and a promise of many years offered by God. Many years and your life will be satisfying. Lord Jesus, that's a word. People are looking for satisfaction everywhere else. They're looking for satisfaction in drugs. They're looking for satisfaction in sex, premarital sex. They're looking for satisfaction even in churches by what the preacher is saying, by what the leadership is doing. They're looking for satisfaction and all kind of stuff. Social media is huge um, for people trying to get satisfied. Pornography, all of that. But God is saying, listen, store my commands in your heart. And if you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. I'm telling you from experience, nothing in this world will truly satisfy you. I know because I did what the world offered. And it wasn't satisfying. It didn't satisfy. It actually, to be honest, it left me more angry. It left me more empty than, than anything else. And I did it. And I know people are doing it right now. They might be young in age or maybe new to the world and the lust of the flesh, the pride of life and the lust of the eyes and the world and all that stuff. And they're battling just like we're battling as older people, right? But satisfaction, <laughs> maybe... Uh, some kind of immediate satisfaction, like temporary satisfaction, of course. Sin is pleasurable for what? A season. But when that season is over, man, get ready for the consequence. That's why I like, I look at um, situations sometimes like, man, only if they knew. Because oh, I know some things are so hard to snap out of, especially when it comes to sex. And with the younger generation, um, they've been poisoned and like duped by all these advertisements and all these movies and all these social media things that their generation, the ones who came up in the social media craze, have been bombarded with thoughts and pictures and images right in front of them. And they haven't, they, they kind of were rewired in way of thinking was rewired. And they don't know really too much about loyalty and kindness God's way. So my prayer would be, that the older generation would teach the younger generation in a, in a way that's not only relevant, but in a way that's through experience, we could share life. And once we share that life, we could take the life that we're sharing and bring it to the Lord's word and see how God will handle the situation. Amen. Because I know I, I'm not I'm not here to convince anybody of you know anything. I'm, I'm really relying on Holy Spirit God to do the convicting of sin and the convincing of who he is. So that way we can all find loyalty and kindness. Okay, so you will live many years. That's the, the promise here. And your life will be satisfying. Bigger promise, right? Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Deep within your heart. Then... Because when you do these things, then you will find favor with both God and people. God first and people. And you will earn a good reputation. And uh, I'd rather have a good reputation. Be called corny or you could call me corny all you want. But I'd rather have a good reputation than anything else. I don't want to be popular. I don't want to be a popular evangelist. I just want to have a good reputation. Because good reputations go longer a longer way. But boy, if you make a mistake when you know what I mean, and you're popular, you make a mistake and you get into certain areas that are, are not cool. Listen, if you love me, let me know if I'm, if I'm going in the wrong direction. That's loyalty. That's kindness. Because you you don't want me to go into a situation where I'm going to be like lose my mind or something like that. If you really care or if you really love somebody, you would tell them the truth. Regardless if they're going to like it or not. It's not all about being liked. It's not all about finding favor with people. It's about hiding the commands of the Lord in our hearts. Right? And then receiving a promise for doing that. And get the satisfaction from God. People don't want to connect. Oh, but, you know, how is, how is the Lord going to satisfy this craving I have? And it could be whatever craving. And you're like, oh, that's, that's, that's unholy to do. You can't go to God and ask him to 
fix this or to uh, replace this craving that I have for whatever it is. Who said? Yes, you can. God will give you the desires of your heart. And he will replace your heart if you're born again saved with his heart. So it, what that, he knows us. That's the thing. Come clean with the Lord. He knows you anyway. Be honest. Amen. And you'll find loyalty from God for sure and kindness from God for sure. And from, from that, you'll get favor with God and with people. So why is it important to find favor with people? That's the question I first asked. I know people say, oh, don't, I don't care what people say about me. I don't know about that. I used to say that too, but I do care about what people say about me. Now, it's not going to, it's not going to change really a lot of things in my life unless they find something uh, that's really like hindering me and my life and my family's life and they're telling me about it that's something different but if people are just talking and talking about you or whatever and talking about me i do care because if i'm representing the lord jesus christ the wrong way or bad way or i'm, I'm a charlatan or whatever i've been called that before I, I just would like to know like why would you call me something like that so i do care what people say but i understand why people say don't care like don't rest on what people are saying about you before you believe what God is saying about you so I cannot repeat over somebody else what I want to say like I would like to say a lot of things um, over people but if it's not what God is saying over them then I'm just wasting my time and my breath and I'm not being loyal and I'm not being definitely not being kind to the person so I would like to repeat what God says over people's lives rather than what I would like to say because, oh, this person got me angry. You know, this person cut me off on the highway, so I'm going to tell them this and I'm going to tell them that. I'm going to give them peace of my mind. Okay, well, that's the flesh. and We have to all deal with that. But what about if we repeat what God says over somebody's life before we um, say what we want to say over somebody's life? And we're all going through stuff, man. All of us, every single person you know and every single person you don't know is going through issues in life. Millionaires and people who don't have money are going through issues that are very similar in life. People who are healthy and people who are sick are both going through similar things in life. Why? Because we live in a fallen world. And last time I checked, we're all on the same planet, planet Earth, unless there's people that left Earth and went to another planet that we don't know about, at least that I don't know about. Well, Jesus is Lord wherever they go. So it doesn't matter. But on this planet, we all go through things. And if we show loyalty and kindness, that's more powerful than just speaking our mind and winning arguments and, you know, getting your way and having the last word. Those things are like, whatever. They only last for as, as much as the census lasts that you're speaking. And if you're trying to, let me help somebody out. If you're trying to hide sin amongst, it's like you ever went into a place that is dark, right? So you'd be like, oh, cool. You know, like a movie theater or whatever, you're noticing that, you know, people can't really see you. So if you have a zit on your face or your hair or makeup is not on, whatever the situation may be, you're kind of like comfortable because you're not or oh, nobody really could see, um, you know, what's going on. But when those lights turn on, you're like, ooh, I can see everything now. Do you realize that when you walk in to a house of God or to a fellowship of believers and you're in darkness, do you realize, Do you? because some people probably don't realize it. And maybe they could wake up now. Do you realize that your sin and the darkness is being seen like a bright light? It's being almost like you ever took a flashlight and go out in the middle of the night or in the woods and flash it. You see things clear even through that darkness. That's the way um, people are walking around trying to hide their stuff. But it's plain to see. And yet, I don't know if, um, you know, if we're loving by not saying anything about it. But let's go to God's word about it first to gain favor with God. And then God will allow us to gain favor with people. Because if I come to somebody all crazy, oh, man, you doing this, you doing that, whatever. That's not really kind. Then That's not showing loyalty um, to that person. That's just, you know, pointing fingers and judging. But how about if we are loyal with someone, loyal to someone, a friend, right? And you see that the patterns are spiraling out of control. I think it's our responsibility as a believer, as a brother in Christ, as a sister in Christ, like let the older sisters teach the younger sisters, let the older brothers teach the younger brothers. And we need to go with love and compassion and do what the word says. Remind them of what God has taught them. Remind them of what they've been taught in the Christian faith. And 
help them to store what they know, right? The commands of God in their hearts. Sometimes it just takes one conversation or sometimes it takes us to, you know, walk alongside of the younger generation or even the older generation that might have lost their way. Whatever the case may be, God is looking for people to help other people through this. So if we do this, we will have many years. We will live many years, not just exist here on planet Earth, but we will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Who doesn't want satisfaction? Right now, when I was in the world, um, I was looking for things to satisfy my cravings and they were real temporary. And because they were so temporary, guess what? You start going for more and more and more and more. You're like, oh, that didn't last long. Let me do this again. That didn't last long. Let me do that again. And then you keep on going, 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 and you're chasing after the wind. The Bible says you're never going to be satisfied. You're putting people before God. You're putting idols before God. You're putting money before God. You're putting fame before God. So you and I, you're in idolatry. So I was in idolatry for sure. Loyal to friends, maybe. Kind to people, not really. But I was, you know, people said, oh, he was a good guy. He was a good guy. Before Christ, he was okay. But I was just going around hiding my sin. That's why I would get angry when a person of God will know all my stuff. Like, and like they would shine their light on my darkness, and I didn't like that. So I would kind of stay away from the church people, I would call them, right? So because I didn't want my sin to be exposed. I was good, a professional sinner. I was good at hiding my stuff. And then I get saved and like, wow, my stuff is exposed now, so I might as well confess, believe in what God is doing in my life. He knows everything about me anyway, so I can't fake the funk, right? I got to be real and honest with both God and people. Now, I'm not saying to go out and tell everybody your stuff, people that you don't even know, just tell everybody, you know, your stuff or whatever. Um, That wouldn't be wise, right? I would say go to God first and God will lead you to the people that you trust, the people who show loyalty and kindness. And then from there, God's commands, his word, everything that he taught you, he will remind you of the things that you know and you could be helped by hiding God's commandments in your heart. Because the more of God's commandments you put inside of your heart, the more you can speak it out. And that word, a powerful word of God, will help so many other people. And you will want to have a problem with trying to find favor with people first. You want to have that problem. You'll, you'll really live a life of many, of many years, right? In abundance, according to the promise that Jesus made to us as well. So, so store my commands in your heart. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. If you do this... This is, the, this is the beautiful thing about doing what God asks us to do. If you do this, you will live many years, right? And your life will be satisfying. That's huge to me. That, that jumps out to me because I know so many people are looking for satisfaction. They, you know, I've, I've seen young girls looking for satisfaction in a young man. I see other people looking for satisfaction in safe, same-sex attraction. Like they go beyond the thought of it. Because the thought is not the it's not the problem or the issue with God, I don't believe. I think the action is, right? And they're looking for satisfaction there. They're looking for uh, satisfaction in money. So they're trying to get it, get it, get it. Um, there's drug dealers out there, gang bangers and all that. They're trying to get satisfaction in that way, you know, to be popular, to belong to something. But God has been offering complete satisfaction since the beginning of time, of our time, because God has no beginning and he has no end. But since the beginning of our time, he was offering us the best of both worlds. We could have loyalty and kindness, wear it like a necklace, hide the words of God in our heart, and then live many years and be satisfied. Satisfaction is huge right now. People are looking for it. If I had a product to make, amen, I will make a product that will bring satisfaction to people, right? True satisfaction, holy satisfaction, if you know what I'm saying. So so write them deep within your heart. Then, then, and only then, will you find favor with both God and people. And that's an amazing life. When you have favor with God, you find favor with people. And you will earn a good reputation. How many people want a good reputation? I want a good reputation. I'm not talking about living a double life. Man, I was blown away. Somebody I followed for so many years, um dies and then a big scandal comes out after he died after he had such a great reputation but he was hiding he had a double life 
uh, crazy. I was mad disappointed as if he was like, you know, somebody I knew because I, I really felt connected through his ministry, man, to this man of God. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Doing all those exploits, being used by God to go all over the world, literally, um, to speak the gospel, uh, to contend for the faith of the Lord and the kingdom of God and, and just watching how God used him. And then after you die, after he died, a big scandal comes out, um, ruined his reputation so much so that all these books that he wrote, like the foreword for, well, all his books, they got to stop the publications, his podcast, they get that out. They got that off the internet. They, they're trying to wipe his reputation and his name off the face of the earth because of what happened after he died. Um, to me, that, that scares the daylights out of me. I don't want that to be the case for my life. I don't want that to be the case for anybody's life. Doing everything here. That's when the scripture pops out to me like, Lord, 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 I did this and I did that. Prophesy in your name. I did miracles in your name. And Jesus is telling that person, I'm paraphrasing, and Jesus is telling that person, look, I don't know who you are. I don't want that to happen to me or to anyone, man. That's that's like, nah, that's not cool. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to put laws and load yourself up, load your shoulders up with all these um, regulations and laws to do that. I believe that loyalty and kindness will get you to that place of favor with God and favor with people. Do you ever seek approval from people more than God? That's a big, nice, huge, good question. Amen. And I know I'm running out of time here, but think about it. Do you ever seek approval from people more than you seek the approval of God? And I believe when I look at the younger, I think that's what's happening. Um, they love God, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but in the peers, with their peers, they can be too churchy or too godly or too much Jesus because then they'll be seen a different way or even judgmental. So um, we need to pray for the younger generation, man, because uh, I know um, my peers and my, and my age group that are believers, we don't really, at least in my experience, we don't really get the peer pressure as much as they're getting in their teen life and their 20s and all that stuff, maybe even 30s. But man, um, that's huge. Um Seeking approval from people more than God. That could be an issue. And if that's going on and you're going through that right now, just read the scripture for yourself. Proverbs chapter 3. Read the whole chapter and see what God would do with this word in your life. Because it's a real struggle sometimes. You know, you love Jesus. You you know, you want to be a part of the family of God. But it might be too laid back for your friends, your peers, your co-workers some family members that don't don't love Jesus, don't serve the Lord, and they might just be pulling on you and saying, listen, you're missing this. So like people who grew up in a church, right, and that's all they've seen, that's all they know, at some point, they're going to have to decide on whether that's satisfaction or they're looking at the world and the world is lying to them and saying, look what we have, look what we drive, look this girl that I have, look at this guy that I have, look what we're doing, it's so much fun, come on, come on, come out of there, come out of that corny church and come into the world. And it's like a bait. And unfortunately, a lot of young people go for that bait and they get all beat up in the world and then they come back and we're supposed to be with open arms, showing kindness and love and loyalty so when they come back, they'll be embraced by the truth, the way, the life. They'll be embraced instead of rejected or pointed fingers at. A young lady the other day told me, oh, they dis they disconnected from me. They disowned me. I'm not going back there. How? What happened? I don't know what happened. All I know is that comment, um, I, it, you know, I took it personal. I'm like, man, because I'm part of that rejection. Hopefully, it wasn't me that was rejecting, but... If we're part of something all together and somebody's making comments like that, we need to start looking at each other. Are we are we doing this to um, be religious or are we doing this because we love God and we're putting him first in all the things and we're showing loyalty and kindness to people? Because I know for one thing, for sure, kindness leads people to repentance. Not yelling and screaming at somebody and pointing fingers that never led me to repentance. You know what led me to repentance? Kindness, the kindness of God knowing that I was going a totally opposite way away from him, and then he was kind enough to bring me into his family. Amen? And people who were preaching Jesus, the true living Jesus, were kind enough to include me in their activities, knowing that I was ratchet, you know, out there. Kindness led me to repentance. 
kindness of God. So if you're seeking approval from people more than God, you know, we need to um, come clean, be honest, and check that. Check your heart. You know what I mean? Why that happens, I don't know. Everybody's different. There's different situations that you might be facing of why you want to get people's approval more than God's approval. And I see that a lot too. And if I'm not careful, I could fall into that trap too. It is a trap, by the way. Um, I'm not going to say that, you know, it's something um, that's going to be uh, beneficial to you. It's actually a trap. And I believe the trap is set by the world, the enemy, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All the things that we all battle, if we're not careful, and if we're lazy, we don't want to get into the word, we don't speak the word over us. I notice that some, some messages that are preached, uh, I see certain people's reaction because God is speaking directly to them and he's trying to take them out of some situations and they'll walk out of the service or, you know, they'll stop talking or they won't connect or they will just like, and it's really bothering their soul and in a good way. And that's a good thing. That means you are alive. Young lady, you are alive, young man. That means that you are not satisfied with what the world was giving you or what the world is doing, or you're not satisfied with your sin. You know that there's one who could truly satisfy you. His name is the Lord Jesus. We know. We have like a knower inside of us. Holy Spirit God living in every single believer. And surprise, people who grew up in religion, people who grew up in church, people who grew up in cults and all that stuff, they belong to those things, but none of that will give true salvation. None of that will give true satisfaction. So there has to be a point in your life and in my life that we made a decision to trust in that Jesus that they're preaching or trust in that Jesus that even cults talk about. But find the true Jesus. Even in the religions, find the true Jesus. Even in traditional churches, find the true Jesus. Once you taste and see how good the Lord is, you're not going to compare that. Nothing can compare with God. Nothing could compare to Jesus. And nothing can satisfy you more than the word of God, more than God himself, more than Jesus, more than Holy Spirit. Nothing can satisfy you. Sex, drugs, alcohol, anything, party life, all that stuff will not satisfy you. Trust me, I know. It's only a temporary high. It's only a temporary satisfaction. Only self-gratification, all that, very temporary. I know that while you're in it, it may seem like, oh, you know, how could you say that? Who do you think you are? Because you're in it and it's like your 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 soul is like a little bit like dismembered or, you know, it's like a double life situation. So you might not want to hear it that way. But if I approach you with loyalty, show that I'm loyal to the Lord first. I'm loyal to my family. I'm loyal to God, of course. I'm loyal to, you know, whatever. You know, okay, at least let me give this person a listen. And if I show kindness, you know, I'm not coming at you sideways or anything like that. I'm just truly loving you. And I'm seeking God's favor so I could get favor with you. That's all. That's basically all this is in the scripture. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. And I believe not only the person who's loyal and kind will get the good reputation. I believe everyone who receives this word will get a good reputation. I know. Well, how could I how could I turn away? People go to start talking because they know I was doing this down the third. They know my dirt come out of it. And then they're going to be left with a decision to make. They're going to be like, should I stay in this ruckus or this chaos or this um, ratchetness? Or should I do what um, the brother did or I should do what the sisters did and come out of there? And when they, you come out of those situations, it's, it's never too late to stop doing what you know is not good. To stop doing things that are only pleasing to you and to your 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 significant other, your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. If you stop, it's never too late to stop um, and to go and turn to God. Don't worry about what people are saying. Don't try to find favor with people more important than favor with God. So how can you make sure God's approval comes first? That's a good question too, right? How can you make sure that God's approval comes first? Well, I would say to go to God first and say what, he already knows. I'm telling you, he knows. He sees everything. If you could get this revelation, this revelation actually freed me and delivered me from sexual addiction. When I found out that God saw everything that was going on in my life, literally saw it with his eyes, I was disgusted with what I was doing. So that broke me and delivered me from sexual addiction. It could, you, could, you could have an addiction, drug addiction, sex addiction, 
um, uh, you know, self gratification, whatever the case may be. And if you realize that God is watching, um, and if you truly want to um, get God's approval first before people's approval, because it's listen, it's easy to get people's approval. All you gotta do is lie to them. I'm just being honest. All you gotta do is lie to people, and you'll get their approval. Like, uh, you're a Christian, right? You could say yeah, or you could do what Peter did. Oh no, I'm you know I'm not with the Jesus thing. But I thought you go to church. Ah, uh, you know I'm not with the Jesus thing. But I thought you, you know, like a, a leader in the church. Nah, you know, I do that because, you know, I was raised that way. You could deny Jesus three times and then now you're going to gain approval from the people. Right? It's easy to gain approval from people. Just deny who you are. Just deny your identity in Christ. And you'll have a whole bunch of people surrounding you. You'll be popular. You'll be this, that, and the third. But then you'll be in trouble at the same time and making other people um, find your trouble as well and they'll be in trouble more trouble than they even were in before um, you denounced or you said you wasn't a believer anymore that's that's some peer pressure it's a lot of pressure so I'm not saying it's easy and there's certain sins people say all sin is the same I don't know about that because when I read scripture the sexual sin part right kind of like is more amplified or more um, like more Dangerous, it seems like when I read the scripture, than any other sin. Because the Bible says every sin is external, but sexual sin is internal. And the Bible says to run from sexual sin. It doesn't say to run from stealing or run from lying. It says run from sexual sin. So it seems to me that God is looking at that, knowing that um, that was a, going to be a major thing that we as mankind have to deal with. I believe he wants to deal with that type of sin um, in a special, different way, right? Forgive you all the more, right? All the, he'll forgive you for all your sin, but it seems like that one is like special. So that's why when I see the younger generation getting into that, um, and I know it's going to be so hard when you open that door, young man, young lady, when you open that door, I don't think it's easy at all to close it. And I don't even think I'll go on to say this and I'll get out of here. I don't even think we can close that door without the power of God. I don't think so. And that door was meant to be closed until um, God sets us up with our um, partner for life, our spouse, husband, wife. And if you open that prematurely, I think that's going to be a battle. Um, can you imagine a young man that's in their prime? Um, they've been in church all their life. Just imagine with me, church all their life um, was a virgin, then gets de virginized, right? And then um, maybe with a, a person that goes to church as well. And now they're in trouble. And now shame, guilt, all that stuff. Now they have to hide all of that if they don't want to get delivered. Because sin is pleasurable for a season. So you might not want the deliverance. But you know in your heart you need deliverance. But who would you go to? If people you think that you go to are going to be like angry at you whatever. Maybe. But if you know people who are loyal to you and are kind to you. You can really express what's going on to these people that are loyal and kind. And um, they will help you get back your life. Because when you sin and you go that route, you're actually losing your life. Right? You're like not gaining anything. You're getting the temporary satisfaction. But when you do it God's way, God says, His promise, if you do this, store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years. So I'm thinking if you do opposite, you will live short years. So you're shortening your life. I'm just saying that's just food for thought. So how can you make sure God's approval comes first? I believe by being loyal first to the Lord, um, being kind to others, hiding the word of God in your heart so that way it will come out your mouth and then you will earn a good reputation. Finding favor with God first should be more important than finding favor with people. I will disappoint you. Any person you know will disappoint you, but God will never disappoint you. That's the whole kicker. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 4. I hope I hope somebody. I know I probably um, stepped on some toes, but in a good way, in the kindest way I could. Um, my flesh would like to say, man, you better stop because if you keep on, you're going to get blah, 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 you know, but whatever. I mean, that's that would, that would just be my opinion. I'll be stepping out of the scripture and it'll just be my opinion. Will it help people? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm not gambling with people's eternal life. I can't do that. Um, that would be unloving. 
what I could do is trust in the word of God to change people's lives, including my own. So I'm not only trying to help others, I'm definitely being helped because the word of God is being read. I'm speaking it and now I'm being confronted by the scriptures myself. So we're all in this together. No one is higher. No one is lower. And if you're saved, no one has a greater Holy Spirit than somebody else. We all have the same Holy Spirit. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is available to every single believer who trusts and loves Jesus and knows God and knows that we need um, to live according to what the scriptures say. And don't worry about what people say how to live. If you want uh, a testimony of, of what I thought people was telling me and what I did, what people told me to do when I did it and did it really satisfy me, I could testify and say it was all a lie. It was all a lie. I did it and it didn't bring me total satisfaction. It left me empty. And I was like, there has to be more. I was like, okay, time's up. I did what the world said. Uh, where's my true satisfaction? Uh, where, where is the, you know, the stuff that was promised to me? I was trying to cash in on it. And I was like, Mm-mm. I was losing things quick. So it was all a lie. So if something is a lie, there has to be something that is true. If someone is lying, that means someone is telling the truth. It's always an opposite, right? Um, the one living, holy, righteous, loving God wants you to know him. His righteousness, his peace, his grace, his mercy, his love for you, his justice. And he wants us to learn how to be loyal and kind. And wear that loyalty and kindness like a necklace, according to Proverbs chapter 3. And then you will live many years. And I'm telling you, once you're delivered from anything that you think that cannot be delivered because you have to confess it, confess it to God first. And then uh, I would suggest confess this to somebody who's loyal to you and kind to you, uh, who's not really doing the same thing you're doing that would be a game you're playing well let me tell my sin to another person that's doing the same sin because what you're going to do you're going to get agreement in that but like oh don't worry about it nobody's going to know what listen you could fool people absolutely but you know god sees everything like honestly it sounds cliche but god does see everything so i'm thinking what's happening is when people are hiding their stuff it's because they're losing the fear of the lord the reverence and respect for god like the man I was telling you about um, that I followed for many years in his ministry. Then he dies. And, um, you know, I'm sad that he died. But I was like, man, he'll be with the Lord. And then this big scandal comes out. So he fooled a lot of people, millions of people, possibly, including me. But you know that God saw that, right? Saw his double lifestyle. And now I'm like, man, um, I, asked, I literally asked the question, so what does that mean, Lord? Like, is he going to be with you or not? Because he did all that for you. But... And you use them. So I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that trying to mind my business, trying to stay in the Father's business and keep moving forward. If I make mistakes along the way, uh, and men could tell you, I have confessed my issues um, to men of God, not to, uh, I could go, like if I have a man issue, I could go to another man that has the same man issue and then we'll find agreement and we'll figure a way how to hide it even more. Nah. You got to go to a woman of God. If you're a, a young lady in the Lord, go to a seasoned woman of God and they will help you with loyalty and kindness. And if they start pointing fingers, just bow out and say, oh, um, thank you uh, and keep it moving. Find a person who's loyal and find a person who's going to be kind and that is experienced in the word, young lady. And young man, do the same. Amen. Like the young brother reached out to me. Amen. I'm hoping and praying that what I said and um, the experience I shared with him will help him as well. And we can keep moving and building each other up. All right? So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. And remember that God is with you, in you, working through you. And he's for you. And he wants you to live many years. And he wants you to, to be loyal and kind as he shows loyalty and kindness to us. We need to do that with other people. I'm out. Peace.